In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gives his disciples some instructions concerning how to pray. He says, In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This has become commonly known as the Lord's Prayer, signifying that it was Jesus who designed it and taught his followers to pray in a like manner. In the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John, we find Jesus sharing a last meal with his disciples before he leaves them to fulfill the scriptures. Jesus spends much of the meal teaching them and talking to them. Throughout the conversation, Jesus comforts his disciples by telling them that he's going to prepare a place in heaven for them. And he comforts them by telling them that they will receive help in the form of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus also talks about other things. He also tells his disciples how one of them will betray him, and that in the near future, one of them will deny him three times. And he again tells them of his fate and of the terrible death that awaits him. In just a short time, he will depart to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he'll be arrested, beaten, and then crucified. His disciples were confused by his words, as they were most of the time. At the end of the meal, Jesus lifts his eyes towards heaven and prays. It's a heartfelt prayer, wrought with emotion and sincerity. In what was to be one of his last nights on earth, Jesus prays for the things upon his heart. He prays for himself, as he knows what is to come. He knows of his own death, his suffering, and his resurrection. He prays that God might give him glory, so that he might in turn glorify the Father. And Jesus also prays for his closest friends, his disciples. They had been with him through his entire ministry. They saw the miracles that he performed. They heard the things that he had said. Up until this time, they had had him to guide them and teach them. This would soon not be so. He prayed that they might be unified in their future ministry without him being there, and that they might be sanctified by the truth. And then, at the end of this eloquent prayer, Jesus prays for everyone in history who might believe in his name. He prays that his followers throughout time will be unified so that God might be glorified. He prays that those who come to follow him might come together for the common purpose of bringing the gospel to the world. But in all this, he prays first and foremost that the Father might be glorified. In this prayer, we see such heartfelt emotion, concern, humility, and sincerity from our Lord in communion with his Father. This truly is the Lord's Prayer.